The third type of structure a topos must possess is the existence of exponentials. Recall an exponential is also called a map object or an internal HOM object because its global elements are equinumerous to HOM sets or sets of morphisms between objects. In the category of sets, an exponential object of sets X and Y is a set of maps from X to Y. If X has N elements and Y has M elements, then the exponential object X to the Y has M to the N elements, which is where the terminology exponential object comes from. Exponential objects in set squared are described similarly. So we start our discussion with constructing exponential objects in the cohesive variable set of evolving sets. Recall that the representable container of the only object in E is a container with the set of natural numbers as figures equipped with a process which takes n to n plus 1. We will use the adjunction of products and exponentials as well as the Yoneda lemma to define the exponential z to the w. In other words, we set the figures of z to the w as a set of morphisms from the product of the representable in w to z. We have alpha as a figure in z to the w if and only if the exponential adjunction of alpha, which we denote by alpha bar, is a morphism of containers from the product of the representable in w to z. The right action by sigma can be described by, by precomposition of the product of the morphisms y sigma and the identity on w. Evaluation is an evolving set morphism from the product of z to the w and w to w, where a natural transformation gamma from the product of the representable in w to z and a figure, little w and big W, is taken to gamma, evaluated on the identity, and w. So let's construct a few examples of exponential objects in the category of evolving sets to get a better feel for what's going on here. If w is the evolving set, which is a two cycle between two figures 0 and 1, then the product of the representable and w has two copies of the natural numbers as figures, with a process which crisscrosses between the zero row and the one row. We can untangle this object to obtain two copies of the representable object. So the product of the representable in W is seen to be isomorphic to the binary coproduct of representables. Let's now consider the exponential object Z to the W for another evolving set Z with two figures A and B and a process which takes A to B and fixes B. Then since morphisms for the product of the representable in W are determined by where 0, 1, and 0, 0 are mapped to, we see that there are four choices for such a morphism, or that Z to the W has four figures. The process between figures can be computed by the observation we discussed before on the right. The right action morphism, which is the product of Y sigma and the identity on W, takes 0, 0, and 0, 1 to 1, 0, and 1, 1 since sigma is only applied to the first component of this product. So the right action by sigma on the element AA, which corresponds to the morphism which takes 0, 1, and 0, 0 both to A, is the element BB, since 1, 0, and 1, 1 are both taken to B under the morphism AA. Similarly, it's easy to check that BA, AB, and BB are all taken to BB as well. Now that we have the exponential object constructed, Let's see how the evaluation morphism behaves. The product consists of pairs of figures, so the pair AA and 0 is mapped to the 0th coordinate of AA, namely A. AB and 1 is mapped to the first coordinate, B, and similarly for other figures. We leave it to you to check that this morphism respects the sigma action. Let's see now what happens if we change the container Z to an isomorphic copy of W. We still have four elements in the exponential. However, the sigma action will now be altered. We see that AA is still taken to BB, but now AB is taken back to AB, and BA is also taken back to BA. Evaluation is still by this projection to the appropriate coordinate given by the figure in W. Notice that by the exponential adjunction, we have global elements, in other words, morphisms from the terminal object to the exponential object z to the w is isomorphic to evolving set morphisms from w to z. Recall that the terminal object in E sets is a container with one figure and the identity process. So a morphism from the terminal object to the exponential object z to the w 
is a set of fixed points in the exponential and characterizes morphisms from w to z. So for example, there are two fixed points in the exponential object z to the w above corresponding to the two evolving set morphisms from w to z. There's one morphism which sends 0 to a and 1 to b, and the other which sends 0 to b and 1 to a. In the previous example, there was only one morphism from w to z, which sent both 0 and 1 to b, hence only one fixed point to the exponential object. More generally, consider the evolving set w, which is an n cycle. In other words, w has n figures and a process which takes n to n plus 1 modulo n. Then for the same reasoning as in case of the 2 cycle, the product of the representable and w is the coproduct of n copies of the representable. Therefore, a morphism from the product to an e-set z is equivalent to giving n elements in z by seeing where the first column of figures in the product is taken to. The sigma action is by precomposition, by the product of y sigma and the identity of w, so sigma acts on a figure z0 to zn minus 1 in the exponential by taking it to zn minus 1 dot sigma z0 dot sigma z1 dot sigma and so on to zn minus 2 dot sigma. So we now have a general formula for the sigma action in z to the w when w is an n cycle. Namely, it takes z0 to zn minus 1 and shifts everything to the right one and takes the sigma action component-wise. Then there is an e-set morphism from w to z precisely when this figure is stable under such a shift followed by component-wise action. Next, let w be an evolving set with two figures and a process which takes 0 to 1 and fixes 1. Then the product is as follows, where each figure in the 0 row is taken to the 1 row, and the one row moves sequentially to the right. Let z be an isomorphic copy of w with figures a and b. Then the figures in the exponential object of z to the w are morphisms from the product to z. Notice that we may freely choose a or b for any figure in the zero row, and also for the figure zero one. Then each figure in row one, with the possible exception of zero one, must get mapped to b. Therefore, we may express each figure in the exponent as a binary number where the ones place determines where the element 0, 1 is mapped to and the string after the decimal point is where the row 0 is mapped. By the way, those purple numbers should be flipped here. Therefore, z to the w is equinumerous to the numbers between 0 and 2, noting that we have two ways of expressing each number strictly less than 2, since 0, 0.1000 repeating is the same as the number 0 0.0111 repeating if you're taking this in a strict analytical sense. Anyways, we will just be using this as a notational convenience. If we're given a z to the w figure 0 0.111001100 with zeros repeating the rest of the way, by precomposition with the product of y sigma and the identity on w, we see that the sequence 010010 and so on is taken to 1.1100110 repeating the rest of the way. In general, since 11 is always taken to b, we see that the number z point x0, x1, and so on dot sigma is 1 dot x1, x2, x3. So x0 is lost and everything shifts to the left behind the decimal. Then the number of maps from w to z are all those decimal numbers which are fixed under the action, namely the elements 1.11111 repeating and 1.0000 repeating, and no others. The first global element, 1.11 repeating, is a map which takes 0 and 1 both to b. The second is the isomorphism which takes 0 to a and 1 to b. We leave it to you to describe the evaluation morphism. The takeaway of this example is that an exponent of two containers with a finite number of figures may have an infinite number of figures. The reason why is so that z to the w becomes the best parameterization of morphisms from w to z, meaning that it enjoys the universal mapping property of an exponential object.